I'm going to show you how to use a carpal tube as a format to create the vessel. We've got lots of different sizes of these. The biggest one we've got is about, it's got to be about 30 centimetres across. So if you want to do a really big vessel, we've still got carpal tubes. It doesn't have to be a carpal tube. It could be a piece of wood. It could be a piece of polystyrene. Anything that you want to wrap around, you'd use exactly the same technique when using these soft pads of clay. So we used stiff clay last time, we cut out the sections, didn't we, and joined it together. So this is when, for when you want to be able to manipulate the clay slab a bit more. I love wearing masks with a long beard. This is just amazing. So I'll choose a tube. And it's quite... Uh, you, you think it's really simple, but there's a couple of little things that you need to do. First thing you need to do, believe it or not, is actually wrap it on a piece of paper. What happens to clay when it, when it dries? It shrinks. So this little bit of newsprint, and it can be newspaper, but Ray's lost my newspaper, so it's newsprint. I've just wrapped it around. Don't be tempted to put uh, masking tape around there because actually masking tape isn't porous and it will, it will actually hinder your removal of the cardboard tube. I've just tucked it in the end. So that's the first thing you do to prepare, prepare the cardboard tube. And it's the same if it's a block of wood, same thing. Wrap paper around it. It doesn't have to be on the end because you're going to be pulling, we pull this out. But this is going to give you support because we're using soft clay. The clay's got no residual strength. So the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly create a straight edge. Boy, it would be better if the pattern was that way if it's long enough. I've got a mark. See if I've, I've just seen if I've got enough clay to do it that way around. I have. I'll try to do that way around. We'll keep that nice edge and we'll see what happens at the top. So I've measured it just to make sure that I've got enough clay to wrap around. And it's as simple as grabbing the clay, getting round to nearly the end. I haven't gone straight. Now you've got to be really careful here, because we've got the texture on the outside, don't manhandle it too much because you will lose the texture. And because this is soft, I'm just going to knit it together. So we've got this thing, and then we talk about uh, when we're making ceramics, part of the thing is the mystery. So the people who don't know how to make pots will look at a pot and go, wow, that's amazing, because they can't see a join. We're not going to be able to hide this join. So what we do is we actually uh, accentuate it and make it part of the aesthetic. So just like the other one, we're just, just going to start knitting. knitting that texture together. Now you can do whatever you want. You could go in and you could put, uh, I'll show you some other things as we go along. I'll get some more tools. So we've, we've gone, okay, we've got a join. Let's celebrate the fact that we've got a join. Let's make it a bit more interesting. So we just, that uh, might be that you make up, get some little blobs of clay. You stick it on. Because this clay is so soft, that's enough to join it. If it was dry, you know, like the first slabs, we can't join those, we have to make a slip and a slurry. Because this is so soft, you can literally just stitch the two surfaces together. 
hasn't got a base on it though, has it? I don't want to, 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 to see the joint. If you don't want to see the joint, yeah. then you wouldn't use this technique. Yes. If you want to do it absolutely perfect this time, you would um, measure, like the way I did before, you'd cut a chamfer, so when the other piece overlapped, it would overlap perfectly on the, on the joint. It's very hard to use soft clabs and hide a joint. So it's, you, can, you can do it, but it's very hard to do it. Or you add, get some of your paper and rub the texture in over the top to try and hide it that way. Depends what it is you're doing. We'll, we'll have a look. When you start making it, if you want to do it, we can, we can try and show you how to do it perfectly. Perfectionists, eh? Oh. So we need a base. Really easy to get a base. There's my knife one over there. So we're going to use the same, same bits of clay. And put it on there. Oh, enjoy your man, I'm going round, but I'm not cutting perfectly close. Give it a little tap, and then again. I'm just going to start. Obviously, you can take more time than me, or less if you want. This, this is called a banding wheel. Yeah. This banding wheel is a Shimpo banding wheel. These ones are about 200 quid. You, but you can, you can go to Ikea and buy a cake decorating stand. A Lazy Susan. A Lazy Susan, anything like that. The, you can get 20 pounds of um, ceramic banding wheels as well. This, this is just like the Rolls Royce. We were actually gifted these uh, by the same person who gave us all the books. Um, so we've got five of these, five of these, so they're here for you to use, so if you want to use them. It makes, when you're working on pots, it makes it so much easier. I was going to say, when you get them on eBay, they're much cheaper, you know, they're not looking at that box. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you can get some. They're not, 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 they you can also do something that's called kitting, so you've got the texture. So almost like the way I was um, stretching the slabs out, you can just stretch the little bits of clay, still with the texture on, and apply them. Oh, if to add a different aesthetic, you know, or it might be that you make a lot of skin, and on the join you actually put a strip of the texture on there. The clay will join very easily. You won't need to add water on it or anything. Just as long as you knit it together. What about air trap behind the clay? It shouldn't have much of a problem with something like this. Um, I, mean, I don't think we've ever had one blow up yet. Yeah. You'd have to be really unfortunate because the join is only a centimetre, it's very unlikely, and we've stitched it together. When, you, when you've got your pot to this state, don't be tempted to leave your cardboard tube in there. It's actually better if you can remove it. because that will dry out quickly. And what it, now it's safe, if you wanted to, you could go back in uh, and tidy that seam up on the inside. And 
that's it. That's pretty much what you're going to do. With your own artistic flair. With a much neater finish, I'm sure. But that was quick. And I've, I've still been able to keep all the texture on the side, so just be aware when you're touching your stuff, when your hands are touching. You notice I haven't used anything with water on it. As soon as you add water to clay, you get all, it's all slimy and... So if you're trying to hand build, unless you're using a little bit to join those stiffer slabs together, try and avoid it at all costs. Does everybody know what they're doing? Yeah. So we're going to need to get some bats. We'll use the slab roller, we've got textures in there. I'm going to try and see if um, we can get some WD-40, because if you want to use the rubber mat,